Good morning. Okay, this morning I've, or oh, in the past few days, I've been given two examples of uh, the COS1512 uh, question paper for assignment one, question four. This is semester one, 2017. The question reads, Write a program that will create user IDs for email addresses of a company. Names of employees will be contained in a file. Your task is to read the file character by character. Employee names are separated by semicolons. The process of creating a user ID is as follows. The first eight characters, excluding spaces and non-alphabetical characters, become the user ID. Your program will therefore ignore all spaces and non-alphabetical characters from the input file. If the employee name in excluding spaces and non-alphabetical characters consists of less than 8 characters, the user ID will also be less, contain less than 8 characters. E.g. J.G. Smith will give a user ID of J.G. Smith. And GMBZ note will give you a user ID of GMBZ. You you will need you will however not work with the full surname. Your program will read character by character and form the user ID as you go along, adding each new character of the ID to the output file. Call the output file user ID dot as soon as you read a semicolon, the previous user ID is complete and you can then write the semicolon to the output file to separate the user IDs. You therefore have to plan the logic properly so that you don't have to go back to the output file to delete characters that should not be there. And then it shows you, create an input file called employee dat with the following data. So you copy copy the information into that file, okay? Then, if you scroll over to the next page, it says, allow the user to specify the name of the input file. Okay, so here's example one. The person was trying to create a user-defined um, function. So this is the header, okay? They've included all these um, includes. And the only three includes that are required is IO stream for your input and output, F stream for your files, and CSTD lib is um, this for this exit that you're specifying on these files. Okay. So then you use using namespace standard. All right. So what I did was I've highlighted some of the things that were um, that that what what I could read from the code. So basically, they've created some variables over here. I don't know why they've got the star str30. They're obviously wanting to restrict something to 30 characters. Um, but I don't see why we need that. Also, this int i and j, I don't know um, what it's for because it's not used inside of the main. Over here is an excellent strategy. What they're doing is They've defined a, um, a input file, so if stream is the input file stream, then OF stream is an output file stream, and then this is their um, defined name that they're giving it. Okay? Then what they're doing is they're testing the input file, but if you remember what I was saying, you look on the next page here, it says allow the user to specify the name of the input file. So this over here is incorrect because it's it's already been defined and the user should be defining it. But anyway, besides that, uh, what's nice about this part is it says um, test to see if the file exists. If not, then you give out this output. The file you're attempting to open could not open. And then they did the same for the output file. So that was great. This one is a call to their function. They're passing the input and the output file to their user-defined function. And once it returns, I don't know um, where it would return any values to, but it's not returning anything. 
um, it would then close the files. Um, so that's a good strategy to have. I, I didn't bother even reading all this stuff in the uh, function. I got lost uh, quite easily, quite quickly. Um, so I've just left that. The second, the second example here is also um, they've declared the string include. You don't need the string include, not for this um, problem. Then they also they started with declaring a character um, of data, uh, data and in file data name, and they're restricting the file name to 16 characters. I didn't know why they want to do that, but yeah, there's no need to restrict the user's input. Uh, and I don't know what this other file, the data one, is going to be used for. Um, input file, yes, there we go. We've got our input file and we've got our output file. This guy was uh, good enough. He's uh, actually specified, asking the user, hey, uh, enter your file name. But the bad news is he's passing it to the character variable um, over here. In file name is declared as a character. I wouldn't do that. I would have used the string one. Okay. Um, over here they testing, and the, the problem with their testing is they've specified the file name that was on the um, tutorial letter uh, when they should have been passing this uh, parameter across to here. Even if they are, um, yeah, even if they if they did declare it as a character okay so this this testing part is great this testing part is great i must be honest i didn't even bother looking uh further than this um here's their user defined function also passing the input string and user id for each core um they're using a get line uh to, which is good for reading a whole line of something so kudos for that, but um, yeah, uh, this I, I didn't even bother about the rest. Here they've got the close options, which are excellent. Okay, so those are two ones that I've been given. Uh, yeah, they they seem like they're on the right track. They definitely got uh, the right ambition behind it. I was very impressed with the response. This is the correct method. Um, here you've got your three includes that I was telling you about. The one is for the input output stream, the other one is for the file stream, and this is for these exits that we use for testing. Okay. Um, I gave the string a very long name so you can chase it down throughout the system here and understand what it's doing. And the same with the character. I declared a character variable because we need to obviously test a character. Um, so this is going to grab the user's, uh, the user's file name, whatever they put as the input file name. And this is going to be used to pick uh, which character is, uh, it's currently at. And then the int count is obviously to um, use through our loops. So that we know, hey, we want to find out um, how many characters have we gone uh, so far. Because we don't want to go beyond 8. If we go beyond 8, we are not meeting the requirements that were specified. Then we've got the input file stream and the output file stream. And over here, I've asked the user to please enter the input file name. I've used the get line here. And I've said uh, grab the input and pass it to this um, string variable. It's, I've used the get line in case the person uses a space. And uh, it wouldn't cause the system to crash. If you don't have to, you could have just used a simple sin forward slash forward slash input file name. But I just used get line. Okay. So the other alternative, I'll just show it for you for those that want to use it. You would just go like that, and the input file name, and then you could get rid of this get line if you wanted to get rid of it. But I prefer the get line. So that's the other method.
Then I'm uh, obviously using my in file over here and I'm opening it and then I'm using the file name that the users um, specified and I'm converting it to a string okay because that's what it wants in here is a string okay then we test whether it can open the file if it can open it continues then the output file I've specified you can see there I've specified it as a string um, and so that's the output uh, testing okay then I've said um, we need to get the first character of the open file of the input file so that's why I've started over here in file get and the current character all right and then I've said while the file is not has not reached the end of file EOF stands for end of file and the, this is the great not sign for C++ so while it is not at the end of file then it should uh, have a look at the current character and then it should make that current character into a lowercase convert it into a lowercase okay and once it's done that then we have a look and we say if the current character is an alphabet which is an a or a z okay um, so you can see there it says greater than or equal to a or less than and equal to z so that gives me my um, alphabet characters then it must start adding up count okay and then once count reaches it starts adding each character okay if count is less than or equal to 8 then it starts putting that character into the output file it starts writing it else if the current character is a semicolon then it should output that current character which is the, will be the semicolon and then it must set count to zero okay and then once that's done then we uh, recheck the the um, current character and once we've finished with checking all the characters we should eventually get to the end of file then it'll exit out of this loop and then over here we close the file so now if i execute this you'll see this wonderful screen comes up and what i've done is i've got a employee's um employee file let me just find it quickly i'm going to open it up for you uh, it will be in that folder and there we go and i'm going to employee That. so that is the contents of my um, employee dat file it's got all of these names in it so i'm going to specify that file name here as employee.dat and you can see there it executes and it's returned the results so now if i go and i have a look at the user id dot dat and you see all the um, names all the user ids that were generated in my user dot dat file thank you for watching i hope this helps you understand the code and not just uh, parrot fashion copy it but yeah there's the answer best of luck and thank you for your contribution. Goodbye.